Dante Stallworth will join us at 7.35. Jason March, assistant coach for your Sacramento Kings at 8.05. Four down territory coming up in our next segment at 7.15. Kyle gave you a tease, though, before we went to break. Here we go with some breaking news in the National Basketball Association. All right, breaking news. Let's go right now to the breaking news desk. Here is Carlton Madsen. Ritz, Carlton Madsen. Thanks, Dave. Uh Uh, Breaking news out of Chicago. The Bulls have relieved head coach Fred Hoiberg of his Ah, duties. Why? Because the Bulls are bad at basketball. Come on. You couldn't wait. You couldn't just wait a few freaking days. God, this always happens. Again, I don't care about anything else but how it pertains to the Sacramento Kings. Because the Kings are about to go out on this road trip. They will play Chicago in Chicago a week from today. Now, would you like me to provide an example of the last time this happened to the Kings? Oh, thank you. I will. Last year, the Phoenix Suns get torched by Portland 124-76. They lose to the Lakers. And then they and then they go play the Clippers and lose 130 to 88. 130 to 88. That's 42 points, guys. So what do they do? They fire Earl Boykins three games into the season. Oh, who are they playing next? Oh, look, it's Sacramento. It's the Sacramento Kings. That's who they play next. And they won 117-115. Why? Because everybody wants to impress the new coach. Everybody hates the old coach, and now with the new coach in, they're thinking, oh, I can get more playing time. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Plus, Lori Markkinen returned last night. Kind of rough if you're Fred Hoiberg, who probably should have been fired. I I don't disagree with that. But you don't have Lori Markkinen all year, and then the game after he comes back, the score's 10 off the bench. Ah, you're gone. Ugh. Well, there goes one of those road wins. Kings won in Chicago last year, too. I remember. I was at a hotel watching it. What? Do you think he goes back to college? Or do you think he gets hoibered by an NBA team? That's a good one. No, it wasn't. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what happens to old Fred Hoiberg. Probably does. Where did he come from? Iowa, Iowa State? Iowa State. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, the headline today should be Kings get screwed by Chicago firing he- uh, Fred Hoiberg. I almost said head Freiberg. <laughs> They're Fred, coach. Yeah. Head. Head Freiberg. Freiberg. Okay. Well, all right. Let, let's let's talk about the Kings and Pacers. Head Freiberg. Nope. Nope. Hang on. Head Freiberg you know our boss was like in, a garage metal band. You know our boss is here this morning? In the 70s. Jason Ross is in his office right now. And they always yell at me He's about Jason Ross was. Staying, staying on track. And then you do your funny millennial dad jokes. And the whole segment goes, goes, goes kaput. You got to help me out. Head Freiberg being an English punk band. <laughs> <laughs> from the 1970s is funny. Hey, here's old friend Tyreek Evans. Here, Thaddeus Young digs back inside, looks to the near corner to Collison, kicks it out, Tyreek for three, hits it as time expired. Hey, I said that Phoenix fired Earl Boykins. They fired Earl Watson. <laughs> I had the wrong Earl. Golden State Warriors legend Earl Boykins. Earl Boykins. Actually, the, 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 everyone's wrong. It was Earl Boykins. Yeah, they just he was the he was the interim head coach. Yeah, interim. <laughs> that was Tyreek Evans hitting a three. Uh it was the Battle of the Bogdanovi on Saturday as and I found this out thanks to Grant Napier as Boyan. We knew it was Boyan and Bogdan. What I didn't know, I'm gonna screw this up, but like Boyan, Bo okay, our bogey, Bogdan Bogdanovich is Bogdan. His last name is Bogdanovich, like Bobo. Bogdan Bogdanovich. And I think it's that Boyan, the Indiana guy, Boyan is Bogdanovich. So it's Bogdanovich and Bogdanovich. 
Jason, I know you're listening. Text me if I'm wrong. There, <laughs> I think ours is Bogdanovich. Theirs is Bogdanovich. And it just reinforces the idea in my head that I really want us to sign Bojan Bogdanovich in the offseason. I know the Kings are looking at him very, very carefully. Really, They would love to sign him. What, Kyle? It would really Bogdanovich the broadcast. Mm-hmm. Bog, uh, as in bog, like bog it down. Yeah. yeah, I see what you did there. Bog down. Uh-huh. Uh, I would <laughs> love to have Grant and really Doug as well. Go through Bogdanovich to Bogdanovich, Bogdanovich back to Bogdanovich. It would have to be Bogdan and Bojan. Bogey to Boggy. And my daughter, props to my daughter for asking the question of the weekend, all uh, 11 years old of her, freshly 11, by the way, last month. She asked me, why is the other Bogey named Bojan? I say, his name's not Bojan. She said, that's what he's saying. His name's Bojan, like chicken Bojan. I said, no, it's Bojan. So that's what I said, Bojan. It was like we were doing an Abbott and Costello. No, sweetheart. Bo. Yawn, not bowl yawn. Anyways, Justin Jackson's been playing well recently. Costa Kufas kicks to the near corner. Justin Jackson, he buries a three. Oh, it's raining three pointers at Golden One Center, and the Kings are liking that. They're planting trees in this community. Our Bogdanovich did quite well. Evans launches for three, no good. Rebound, back tap, running under it. Bogdanovich for Sacramento. Bumped in transition, pulls up for three. High the ball game. 82-82 as Bogdan Bogdanovich coming off a career-high 26 in the last game. Has 15 in this one, and that's going to be your Pekkas Brothers moment of the game. That's right. That's your Pekkas Brothers moment of the game. Get the spectacular backyard you've always wanted with a beautiful Pekkas Brothers patio or sunroom. Best price, best value, guaranteed every day. Hey, Mom, what's that? It's Pekkas Brothers. Our guy Jason, by the way, this is just for you and me, Kyle, and nobody else. I I, I said, hey, if I pronounce it wrong, let me know. You know what oh, he no. Te- you know, he texted me. It's pronounced Buddy Healed. <laughs> Did he text you too? No. <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> 100% verbatim what he texted me. All right, so <laughs> late in the game, former King, uh, not Tyreek Evans this time, but Darren Collison hits a big three ball. Collison probes, pulls it back, throws right wing to Joseph, the former San Antonio Spur. Back to Collison, tees up the three, scores the triple against his former team. 110-107. Tenth three-pointer that Indiana has made tonight. Darren Collison now has double-figure scoring with 11. I had mentioned that Willie Cauley-Stein had been questionable on defensive end earlier in this game. Willie Cauley-Stein read my tweet at halftime. I'm absolutely positive of it and was right there when he needed to be at the end of the ball game. How long will they wait before they go? Shumpert, first of all, you got to make a successful inbounds pass. He does to De'Aaron Fox. So the countdown begins. Fox goes strong, gets into the lane. Here's the flip and the floater, no good. Stick back, Willie Cauley-Stein. Kings take the lead on the perfectly timed follow-up. 111, 110, Sacramento. Still 16.1 seconds to go as Nate McMillan now calls timeout. All right, so there was a situation then, end of the game, Indiana has the ball, and Boyan Bogdanovich, their, their bogey, uh, had been killing us all game long. He was their best player that night. Remember, no no Victor Oladipo that night, so the Kings kind of capitalized on a break. They couldn't win. They lost to the Jazz when they didn't have Donovan Mitchell earlier. So that was nice to see. But Bojan Bogdanovic, who was obviously trying out for uh, the Sacramento Kings in a big deal next year, 27 points in 37 minutes. The one guy you didn't want to have the ball in his hands and he drove, he got a screen on the left side, took advantage of it, and then Willie Cauley-Stein slipped, leaving Bojan Bogdanovich, what, about a 10-footer uh, from the side. And I was absolutely convinced it was going in. I'll let Gary Gerald tell the story. Eight seconds to go. Takes the dribble left. Gets into two-point range. He balances up. He fires for the lead. It's no good. Rebound. A scrum and a jump ball is called. Now, time just expired, but... When the whistle... Oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Gerald. There's the big explanation there. So, ball comes down. Buddy brings it down. Uh, Darren Collison gets in there. They call a jump ball. They have to go through and figure out the time. And, and there was a bunch of other crap in there as well. But eventually, Kings come down with the ball. They win uh, the ball game. 
And uh, yeah, they go to 11 and 11 on the season. A uh, good win. Any win's a good win, but this is a good win against a quality opponent who did not have Victor Oladipo. Yes, you were at home. 17 and 13 for Willie with three assists on eight of 13. De'Aaron Fox, 15 points, seven of seven from the line. And I'm enjoying seeing him getting much, much better uh, from the line. I believe going into this game, the Kings were the only team in the NBA who had seven players averaging double figures. Iman Shumpert just fell below that threshold with an eight point output. Uh, on Saturday night. And uh, not only did Bogey have 20 off the bench and, and, and uh, Williams had 12 uh, off the bench, but Justin Jackson's playing a little bit better. And I understand when you're looking at a guy who scored eight points in 25 minutes, I, I, I get that the bar is probably set a little bit lower. I'm rooting for this kid. I've always rooted for this kid. And honestly, if they can get anything out of Justin Jackson, even if he can just be a, a spark plug off the bench – that rolls in and can hit from outside and, and play some pretty decent play some pretty decent basketball. Uh, led the team at plus 10. There was only one starter in the plus minus on the positive. That was Buddy Heald at plus 3. Uh, Bielitsa was at minus 10. Willie Cauley-Stein minus 5. Shumpert minus 6. Fox minus 3. Uh, the bench really did help out. 12, 8, and 20 points. Jaeger went to a light bench, though. Only four guys off the bench. Giles, Mason, and uh, Yogi Ferrell did not play. Neither did Ben McLemore. Tough game for Costa Kufis coming back offensively. He was just having trouble handling the ball, but he did have seven rebounds and a block in 15 minutes, plus five on the floor. And once again, Costa Kufis, even when he's not scoring, doing things you needed him to do. Marvin Bagley did not play. He said it wasn't going to be a long-term thing. He tweaked his back uh, towards the end of the uh, – who did they play before Indiana? Why am I, why am I spacing? on that clippers uh clippers thank you he tweaked his back towards the end of the clippers game uh hoping to have him back for phoenix tomorrow we will take a break when we come back let's uh flip to football real quick four down territory and uh dante stallworth uh ex-grant high school star played for tennessee played for the patriots played for the saints and a couple others. He will join us at 7.35. If you haven't heard Dante on the program before, it's always a fascinating interview. Jason March, Kings assistant coach at 8.05. We're back in four. Sports 1140 KHTK. Four Down Territory brought to you by Fire Wings, where, hey, go to the How location this Saturday and show them that you follow Fire Wings. It's uh, Fire Wings CA on Instagram. If you're one of the first 500 people, that's a lot of people. You're one of the first 500 people to get there this Saturday. You're going to get a free, their new Nashville chicken. Wow, nice fade. Uh, the new Nashville chicken sandwich. I had an opportunity to go with some of the guys. Nashville down there. hot chicken, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, let me tell you. There's there's three levels of spice that they put out. I had the, the, the lowest one. And it was, you know, something's just spicy enough to where you want more, but you can feel it. Mm -hmm. This wasn't like a painful, oppressive spice. It was a, hmm, that's spicy. This wasn't a, huh, it's good now, but it's going to not be good tomorrow spicy. Sure. Uh, Brioche bun, they use a pounded out butterfly chicken thigh instead of a breast so that it's juicier. And then a coleslaw on top. Hey, there's your 30-minute fire wings read, but get out there this Saturday. Trying to service the uh, listeners here by getting them a free chicken sandwich, and it's darned good, too. First down, Kyle. Should all plays in the NFL be reviewable? I purposely put this number one because I don't even know if we're going to be able to get to all four downs today because this is a this is a topic. When you say should all plays be reviewable, I want to be clear. Are you saying every single one? Yeah, if you think a mistake was made by the officials on a play, mm-hmm. you should be able to review it. So, in in theory, I say yes, but I don't have the other answer, which is, okay, if all plays do become reviewable. First off, if all plays are reviewable, I think the rules should almost stay the same. You should still get the same amount of challenges, but you and I've, yes. talk, but you and I've talked about this before. One adjustment I would make, if you get a challenge right, you get unlimited challenges. Yeah, I, yeah if, you, if you keep getting... Challenge is correct. Unlimited. But when you miss one, you're done. When you miss one, you're done. That that that's, counts that, and that's taken that, away. That disincentivizes the correct. just throwing. Because when I brought this up before, people go, the games take six hours. And well, no, because no. coaches aren't going to. And if the officials are getting that many calls the wrong. The game should take six hours then, and then the, the referee should be disciplined. Right. So 
But here's the other end I need, Kyle. I I would need to see a plan laid out. And what I would need to understand is uh, if it's a pass interference play and that is reviewed, okay, what what action is taken? In other words, uh, what if the penalty? What if the whistle's blown? What if, uh, not on a pass interference play, but on a different play, do they just not blow the whistle? Would you not then blow the whistle at the end of every play? Okay, so, so you're you're talking, let's say offensive pass interference is called. Sure. Um, and they, no, they wouldn't blow the a play false dead. False start, but, for example. Yeah, yeah they blow the play dead, but he wasn't, it wasn't a false start. What are you doing if a play that is normally blown dead is not blown dead? That's, I need to understand the schematics of how they're going to work that. But if, and I'm assuming yeah, they can there, find a way. Here's the other, here's the other issue you run into, mm-hmm. is you would need coaches to very specifically point out what, what they want to review. Correct. Because I could foresee an issue where coaches hire a review watcher mm-hmm. person sure. who says, hey, okay, we have these 10 guys on staff. Yep. You are to watch every offensive lineman because they say there's holding on every play. Right. They say you're to watch every offensive lineman. And, hey, 68, I'm reviewing there was holding on 68. That's why I don't think every play should be right. reviewable. And that's where I – the counter argument to myself. Be- because if that's the case and they have to hold themselves to that – there's probably a penalty every five plays. Yeah. For example, uh, Hail Mary is thrown. Hail Mary is thrown incomplete. How many times would we see a coach say, uh, I'm reviewing that. It was pass interference on the defense. Right. 99 times out of 100 on a Hail Mary, there is pass Some interference. Kind of on someone, yeah. That's where the problem is. But to, yeah. your, to your point, Kyle, and why you asked the question, I do think that more things should be reviewable, but I also think there's a fine line. Right. I think on a false start where the play should have been blown dead and it was not, yeah. like we saw last night, mm-hmm. you should be able to review that. I completely And say, agree. hey, that play should not have happened. There were some pretty big mistakes in that Steelers-Chargers yeah. game last night. Second down. Second down. Second down. What was the most surprising result of the weekend? <sighs> well, it's a tie for me between two games. I- I'm going to go with the Giants beating the Bears, even though the Giants were at home. The Giants have been terrible all year. Uh, the Bears have been on on a great run. And here's what here's what gives the edge to me over the Cardinals going into the Packers, uh, going into Green Bay, is that the Bears got the onside kick and tied the game, going to, sending it to overtime. You usually, when you see a really good team losing and then mount a monster comeback and you go into overtime, whether it's in the NBA or the NFL, you're always going to see the better team find a way to win it in overtime. Everyone thought when the when the Bears tied it up that that game was going to go to Chicago, and then the Giants managed to win in overtime. That's mm-hmm. what really surprised me more than the four quarter score. So I'm going to very slightly go with that. Yeah, with 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 the, uh, respect to the Cardinals beating the Packers, I think that's the obvious one. The Jags shutting out the Colts yeah. six nothing. That that to me was I thought the Colts were going to go in there and blow the doors off of of Jacksonville because yeah. of Cody Kessler starting and sure. the Colts defense did a nice job but their their offense putting up a zero spot after Andrew Luck had thrown three touchdowns in eight consecutive games mm-hmm. I thought they were going to put up a huge number that Jacksonville wasn't going to be able to keep up with and that obviously did not happen. obviously Cody Kessler is the key to the Jacksonville I season completely agree uh, third down third down. Here we go. Will Kareem Hunt play in the NFL again? Absolutely. Of course. Yes, he will. And it probably wouldn't surprise me if he played at some point next season. He's Kyle, t- let's take a motion and what's right and wrong no, out of the no, equation. He's an under 25 dominant he was multifaceted a rookie la- running back. He was a rookie last year yeah. and led the league in rushing yards. This isn't Ray Rice, who was at the end of his season. Right. Uh, this isn't Colin Kaepernick. And again, I'm not comparing the infractions by the two, but sure. NFL teams, regardless of their issue with the player, unless the player is in jail, if the player can help the team, somebody, somebody will grab them. Kareem our, Hunt- uh, our guest at 7:30. Knows all about that. Uh, he knows all about that. Dante Stallworth, uh, who, and I don't know how to say this, so please don't get on me for the nuance. I, I keep saying Dante, who went through a, a, a horrible situation. Please don't read that as like, oh, I feel so bad for Dante. It's all on him. Obviously, there were other people involved that went through much worse situations than Dante, right. but Dante Stallworth 
found himself in a lot of trouble for making stupid decisions. It's what Dante has done with the time since he paid his price that we want to focus on, and we'll talk to him about Kareem Hunt. I don't think Kareem Hunt gets claimed off waivers like Reuben Foster did. Really? Because there was no because video? Right, correct. That is 100% what it is. Drink. and mm, So stupid. So I don't think he gets claimed off waivers, but you can bet this offseason, yeah. once we know how long he is out for, there will be teams vying to sign him. Because once he clears waivers, any team can go sign him. He's probably going to get time served, so to speak, for the suspension for the rest of the year. Uh, whatever that's going to be. What What is that? Uh, it's going to be five, six games yeah, this year. Five. He'll probably get, my guess is he'll get another 10 at most slapped onto that for next year, yeah. and then he'll be available in the second half of the playoff run for some team. And you're going to see just him long enough for a team to craft the proper PR strategy Absolutely. to make sure it's not a nightmare of signing him. Now, Kyle, I know we're out of time. Should he play in the NFL again? That's the tougher question. We'll talk about that with Dante Stallworth at 735. That that shouldn't be more than a 30-second soundbite from yeah, us. I was gonna, I was yeah, say, it's, you, but, that is a very layered But, but that's what people need to be thinking for, about. I, I agree. For for me, uh, in my personal views, mm-hmm. I say I say probably not. Mm-hmm. But I I I I understand the viewpoint of where where other people uh on the other side of that argument. I, I understand where they're coming from i personally if it was my choice i i, I would not and i'm on the other side of that we'll talk sure. about that at 7 35 it is a nuanced argument fourth down real quick fourth down fourth down skins eagles who you got it's an nfc east matchup but there's no alex smith i don't see the, the skins offering any sort of bite whatsoever i'm gonna go eagles they're at home they're uh favored by six in this game it just seems like a real boring lame game but the eagles will end up winning I, I have Philadelphia. I'm with I, I, I'm with you. I I don't have any. You don't have any insight. I got nothing. I got nothing. Dante Stallworth will join us. Golden next. Tate gets in the end zone tonight, guys. I hope so. I need I need a Golden Tate touchdown. Dante Stallworth will join us next. Do not miss this interview. Uh, it's always it's always fun with Dante. This isn't going to be as fun because we're going to talk about some pretty serious stuff. I also want to talk about uh, his memories of the late great Sean Taylor and uh, and. and some things he said on Twitter about him a couple weeks ago and how he was the only guy he ever avoided hitting when he was a wide receiver. We'll talk about a number of things with Dante Stallworth next on The Drive. Sports 1140 KHTK. Hi, everybody. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. The race for the number one pick is now between the 49ers and Raiders after the Cardinals beat the Packers 20-17 to yesterday. They left the Niners and Raiders as the only two-win teams. Both of them lost their games yesterday. The Raiders lost 40-30 to against the Chiefs at home, while the Niners went on the road and got blown out by the Seahawks 43-16. to Seattle's now won nine in a row. In that series, San Francisco holds the strength of schedule tiebreaker over Oakland, so they would have the number one pick of the season ended today. And speaking of that, Green Bay lost to Arizona. It was Mike McCarthy's final game as the Packers head coach. He was fired after the game. McCarthy went 125-77 in two and 13 seasons with Green Bay. He won one Super Bowl. Joe Philbin has been named the interim head coach for the Packers. It's 733. Peak Financial wants to talk retirement. Dial pound 250 and say the word money. Those are your top stories. Now back to The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. It's The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. Dante Stallworth is ready to go. Kyle's giving him a call right now. Dante joins us via the Fire Wings hotline. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. Jason March, assistant coach for your Sacramento Kings, will join us at the top of the hour. Kyle's Cold Hard Facts, brought to you by Coors Light at 835. I want to thank Jiffy Lube and the Sacramento Republic for sponsoring the video cast that so many of you are watching. We appreciate that. Go to khtk.com, top of the page, if you're on a uh, laptop or desktop. And uh, if you're on a phone or a tablet, just scroll down towards the middle of the page. 339-1140 is our phone number. 1-800-920-1140. You can uh, text us on the Jiffy Loop text line again at 441140. Um, 
where do I want to go here? Because I I, I want to get ready to get into uh, the Dante. And my, my headspace is in talking to Dante Stallworth. First off, I I I I, it, I always want to choose my words carefully here. I was about to say I like Dante Stallworth's story. Well, that's the wrong way to choose it because his story is filled with tragedy, uh, heartbreak, and uh, and ultimately a crime, uh, a crime that took somebody's life. Uh, the way Dante has handled it, and I am, I am obviously biased towards Dante uh, in a sense because he listen anybody who reps the nine one six anybody from Sacramento, uh, I'm I'm a native son I, I root for them you know whether it's uh, Dante Stallworth who made it to the NFL Ontario Smith who had his own issues uh, you know we've let's just be honest we've had Ontario had his issues Dante had his issues we know about Ray Carruth's issues uh, there was a stretch there where you had um, a number of people coming out of Sacramento who had some serious problems and obviously you know you've got your Derek Lees and so many other people from Sacramento that have had uh, fantastic careers with without any issues but where I got to really know Dante and start following him was of all places Twitter uh, about nine eight years ago and his name popped up and I recognized the name oh what's Dante been up to and, and then I saw Dante's activism. Uh, he's very politically engaged. And I don't say that because Dante and I agree politically. In many cases, we do not agree politically. But the fact that Dante had obviously pursued his education, both whether it's in school or out of school, learning, reading, um, gaining experience, and, and really, and I'm putting words in his mouth, but I don't think he'd disagree wanting to be more than just uh, that football player that that thing happened to or that caused that thing, excuse me. Um, I think people make mistakes in life and some greater, much greater than others, but it's the measure of a man or a woman, I think, and how they handle that. And we've had Dante on before, and we've talked extensively about this. So when I saw what happened with Kareem Hunt – I also saw Dante commenting on Twitter about it. And I also saw people coming at Dante saying, hey, who are you to talk about this? Look what you did. And I think Dante and a number of people that <laughs> pitched in on that conversation said, "Uh, actually, Dante is, uh, I don't want to say uniquely qualified, but there's a very small group of people that would be as or more qualified than Dante Stallworth to talk about uh, what happened with Kareem Hunt. Their infractions were different, but it, it was still two horrific things that had to be rebuilt from. He also said some stuff about Sean Taylor too, the late, great Sean Taylor I want to get into as far as on the field. But right now, uh, joining us, former star. Well, I guess always a star, really, from Grant High School, Sacramento, California, Tennessee, and then a uh, long career with, I think, six different uh, football teams. Uh, the one, the only, Dante Stallworth. Dante, it's Dave. I hope you've been well. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me on, brother. Hey, no problem. I, I, I appreciate you coming on, and I want to get right into it so we can spend the, the rest of the, the interview uh, maybe on some not-so-serious things. But when you saw the news on Kareem Hunt – What's what's the first thing that crosses your mind when you hear something like that? Um, I was hurt. I, w- I was hurt to know that another one of my colleagues had engaged in some behavior that was, uh, number one, avoidable and obviously uh, inappropriate. And I don't say that to judge him. It's just that, you know, I've been through uh, my own experiences, things that I've experienced in life, uh, personal or close to other people who have experienced uh, things, and I feel like I'm like I'm able to speak on decision making, and that's you know it's, it's something that I never wanted to speak on, but I knew that there were two options that I had. I could either keep quiet and go crawl in a hole and never be heard from again, or I could speak out on these issues and go and try to help other people not. Uh, fall down the same rabbit hole and not not do uh, a lot of the same things that I did, not make those same bad decisions at um, at certain times in your life when 
you know, when, when everything seems to be going well and you have so much to lose and you're making these decisions that, you know, Hey, may not come and bite you in the butt one day or one week or one month or one year, but eventually, if you continue down the path, it's going to pick up to you. There's a great Chinese proverb that says, if you continue down the path you're going, you're going to end up in the direction that you're headed. And I think that's what I failed to recognize when, when, when I was, uh, you know, that young. And, and so I, I try to be an example for these guys. Um, when I go and I speak to NFL teams, I go and speak to players individually. I've done work with the NHL. I'm working on some things with the NBA. And again, I, I would rather be, you know, uh, talking strictly about football and on the field analytics and things of that nature. And of course, uh, politics and things that I care about. But um, this is obviously a part of my life, and and I can't I can't run away from it. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I don't feel like that would make me um, that would make me less than a human being. And I, I feel like I'm indebted to Mr. Reyes and his family to as long as I breathe to forever speak out, not just against uh, driving under the influence, but just bad decision making and understanding where these decisions come from. There are people who have been in similar situations, who have walked away. So what I try to get to the core issue is to try to get them to understand why did you escalate the situation instead of defusing it. And because, and again, it's not a, it's not a judgment. I'm the last person that needs to judge anybody. But it's more of a sense of trying to help these guys uh, make better decisions. And not just athletes, people in general. I've, I've spoke at the Pentagon, I'm, I'm, I'm going next year to speak to the 82nd Airborne Division. Um, I have a great relationship with the U.S. military here. That, my dad, my father was a service member. His father was a service member. I have a bunch of friends at the Pentagon, and I spend time there regularly. And um, they deal with a lot of issues that are similar to football players. And, and obviously, I have a, um, a past with, uh, with the NFL player and uh, somewhat coaching and, and analysts. And so there's a connection there. And I think they understand, um, you know, that even though, uh, uh, you know, I did have my experience um, and did make that decision, it, 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 also, it also should, could be and should be a teaching tool for, for um, the people that are coming up and learning, um, you know, as, as young men and women in society to try to be better citizens. And I think I can be an example for it. It's not what do with my life. It's not where I thought my life would be at this moment when I was 21 years old, thinking where I would be when I was 35, 40. But it is where it is where I am. And like I said, I can either there's two options: either go crawl in the hole and move out of the country, or or move somewhere and never be heard from again. Or I could be proactive, and I chose to be proactive. That's Dante Stallworth with us, and I, I want to provide some context to to what Dante was saying. Uh, one thing in particular: at, at one point. Dante said, I'm forever indebted to uh, Mr. Reyes and his family. And he's speaking of Mario Reyes, who was 59 years old. Uh, and I'm reading from the report here, uh, Miami Beach. Uh, Dante struck him uh, with his car. Uh, Mr. Reyes passed away shortly thereafter. Uh, Dante was charged. Uh, Dante convicted. Uh, plea deal. And, and you know the story, and you can, you can Google and read it for yourself. And Dante, and I explained this before he came on, has spent pretty much every waking moment of his life since then, uh, not just trying to make amends, but to make a, a positive impact uh, on society and and on uh, those around him. So, Dante, I'll ask you, taking emotion out of the equation, and um, just simply, if you were, if you and Kareem Hunt were in the same room right now, what would be, you know, I don't know whether it's a, an attorney, I don't know whether it's making a statement, but what would be the advice you learned when you went through your situation? What would you advise him right now? I, I would I initially I would advise him the first thing that he needs to do is to forget football for right now and focus on himself um, because you can't be the best football player you can't be the best teammate you can't be the best brother you can't be the best uh, citizen in the society without knowing who you are and why you make certain decisions the way you do you can't you can't provide for anyone completely until you take care of yourself first and understand, understand who you are as a person. So you need to take, he needs to take 
in my advice, in my opinion, he needs to take some time for himself. However much time that is, um, regardless of if he plays uh, the remainder of this season or not, I think he needs to um, try somewhat uh, to reach out to the young lady um, and apologize to her. Um, and he needs to understand the seriousness of the situation. And I think, you know, taking care of himself and moving forward and, um, you know, if, if he understands the, uh, the, the, the harm that he's caused, not only to uh, the young lady and to the Chiefs organization and the fans and the NFL, and his, but his family, you know, these are things that are going to be out in the ethos forever on, on the internet. And so one day he's going to have to talk to his children about this. If he has nieces and nephews, you know, they are affected by this as well. So he needs to take care of himself first. And I think, um, you know, and we are by nature, uh, athletes. And so I'm not saying that he just completely forgets about football, but that should be in the back of his mind. He can still train and should still train to, you know, try to keep some type of balance in his life. But, I think he needs to focus on himself first and, and uh, I think he needs to make some uh, genuine apologies and try to get right with himself. However that is, whether if he's a spiritual man or a spiritual or religious man, however, um, but that, I think that needs to take place first before he can even think about playing another game in the NFL. And, and I, and I hope he does. I, I don't wish ill on anyone. I, I mean, I, I eventually hope someday that he can, play again in the NFL after he's, um, you know, reconciled things with, uh, with everyone involved and, uh, you know, become a, I mean, become an important uh, member of this society moving forward. And again, be in a position, uh, again, not a situation that he probably wanted to be in, but, uh, you know, now he, ha- now he has to understand, you know, now he has to go and listen to women who have been beaten by their husbands for years and, you know, beaten while they were pregnant. Like you need to listen to those stories because it's real, man. It, it's it's real, and he he needs to understand that. And I'm not saying he doesn't. I, I don't know. I don't know him personally, sure. and I don't want to psychoanalyze him just from his interviews and things like that. But uh, he needs to understand the severity of not just his situation, but the overall domestic violence situation, and and it's not a good one in this nation. Dante Stallworth with us, and again, I want to expand a little bit on something you said because in. Today's day, it's such a sensitive subject, and and I think there's some listeners that may have heard you say, I, I hope he plays again. I hope he, you know, a lot of focus on him, and that's why I'm bringing the honors to talk about him. Uh, we don't know the victim, and, and, and that's not something for you and I necessarily to get into, but I think people hear that, Dante, and go, who cares if he plays again? Why should he play again? And, and Dante, I'm wondering if, if your mindset is looking at what you've put yourself through uh and you've taken full responsibility for that nobody else put you through that you put yourself through that uh looking at what you know and again different situations here but what michael vick went through uh and then his redemption coming back uh now speaking regularly and doing things in the community involving the infraction that he originally committed same thing with you do you feel like in a situation like this, especially with a young player, it it can do more good not only for the redemption, but also somebody with his financial um his 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 financial abilities and his star status where in the end if everything works correctly, he'll never be able to make up for what he did, but there can't he he does have room in his life to create positives. Um, yeah, I, I think so. And one of the things that I can speak to is um, when, when uh, on on March uh, 14, 2009, when uh, the accident occurred, well, not accident, but uh, sure. when I hit Mr. Reyes, uh, the Mothers Against Drunk Driving organization came out very hard, as they should have, um, against against the NFL, against whatever punishment the NFL would levy against me personally. And I understood that. I understood that. And as I, as time passed on, I had to, um, I didn't have to, but I, I, I chose to, if given the opportunity, wanted to work with mothers against drunk driving. Um, and to understand, you know, how, how other people are having to deal with issues, um, you know, from, from folks driving under the influence. And so when I heard the stories of these mothers, of these parents, 
um, you know, lose children to people who are driving under the influence. That's devastating, man. That's heartbreaking. It's really heartbreaking. And to know that what I did was 100% preventable, I, you just don't get on the road. And I did. And regardless if I felt under the influence or not, the, the, uh, the end result happened. And that's one of the end results that can happen when you do drive under the influence. And so I had to, um, to get close to people who had, um, lost members of their, of their family due to, uh, people driving under the influence. And, and so when I got to understand and hear these stories, you know, kids, 14, 15 years old, man, it's, it's, it's really heartbreaking. And so I, I look at it from a standpoint of, and again, no one, like I wasn't owed anything. The world doesn't owe me anything. I'm not owed redemption. I wasn't owed or deserve a second chance. It just, happened that way, the, the, the way the process went. But, um, I do know that I think I am a better person. Um, not, not just because I was able to play, but because I was able to, um, you know, take a year of that suspension and rework some things in my life and get right with myself and come back a better person, be able to, you know, speak to when I signed with Baltimore immediately after, um, close relationship with John Harbaugh prior to that. So he was able to vouch for me and my character as a person, but it also enabled me to speak to guys on the team and guys that were blown away by, you know, how that story happened and it wasn't at all what they initially thought. So, um, there are a lot of stereotypes, you know, with domestic violence as there are with, uh, driving under the influence, um, that I'm sure that, uh, Cream Hunt will one day be able to speak towards. And again, you know, when I, Roger Goodell, when he, when I spoke with him, um, uh, you know, before he decided to suspend me for the, for the season, for the year, for 2009 season, he told me, he said, listen, I'm not here to take anyone's career away. That's not my job. Um, he said, I think America, um, this country loves to give people a second chance. And he's like, I, and I think we should give people a second chance when they've earned it. And so whatever those qualifications are for Kareem Hunt to earn that second chance, um, you know, I, I hope he gets it. I, again, I'm not in a position to say that no one should, no one should have a second chance and no one deserves a second chance. I got a second chance. Um, so I may be biased from that standpoint. And I understand people that are calling for him to never play again. I, I totally understand that. Um, but, I, but I do see some benefits in him. Uh, like I said, once he gets right and if he understands the severity um, and he showed, you know, he showed genuine contrition. I, I believe that uh, whatever time frame uh, that is, I, I think that he could become a more valuable member of society later on down the road. And I hope he does that. Either way, I hope he does that. As Ray Rice has done, Ray Rice never played again, um, but you know, he, he became an advocate um, against uh, domestic violence. And and one of the things I, I talked to with. Ray about when this uh, initially happened right before right right before he was suspended was the reality of what he had done to the to the uh, mother of his child but also you know when when Raven his daughter their daughter when she gets older she's going to question him about that yeah she's going to be like dude what are you doing and that's the thing that you know like I said with, with the same thing with Cream Hunt is he gonna, he's going to have to deal with that obviously not the same like you said different situations but uh, Ray Rice has become an advocate and he has, I believe, uh, become a better person than he was that night. And that's, you know, we, we, we've all, we all make bad decisions, some much more egregious than others. Um, but at the end of the day, you hope that when you do make mistakes, you don't let it send you spiraling towards more mistakes or, or, uh, seclusion, it, we hope that you become a better member of society and try to help others um, that you see that the signs that you see that they may not see that you did not see, you can see those signs and recognize them and try to help them and detour them from making that, taking that wrong path as you did. The things that Dante Stallworth has done since that fateful day, March 14th, 2009, you can read about him. I suggest you absolutely follow him on Twitter at Dante Stallworth. And uh, listen, I, I say it every time you come on. I'm I'm proud of you. Uh, and I obviously, what happened uh, is what happened, and I, I have thoughts on that and struggle with that. 
but the fact that you were able to take that moment in your life and you have used every day since to help people uh, and, and, and help them see the light, see the difference, and uh, make a difference in people's lives. That's, that's all you can ask for after you paid your debt to society. Uh, so being a native Sacramentan, uh, I feel very comfortable saying uh, I'm proud of you. And honestly, Dante, uh, I'd love to have you on again in a couple weeks. It's been too long, and I know your phone is probably filled up today with people wanting you. I, I, I don't want you just to be guy we call on when there's some sort of issue in the NFL. You have so much more to offer uh, beyond that, and I always love picking your brain. And I really appreciate you giving us uh, time in your hometown to, uh, to talk this morning, buddy. Anytime, Dave. I appreciate you having me on, brother. All right. Take care, brother. That's Dante Stallworth. Always enjoy talking to him because he uh, – he provides a perspective a lot of people cannot. A horrific thing uh, that 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 he did back in March of 2009, uh, and we can get we can philosophize on this all day long. I'm a dumb sports radio donkey. I'm not going to do that. That's way above my head. But uh, when you make mistakes, when you make errors, when you do horrible things, and yeah, many are unforgivable. Uh, but somebody like Dante, who took that as an excuse to uh, make others' lives. Uh, better um, when people say he shouldn't be talking about the Kareem Hunt situation. No, that's one of the first guys I want to talk to about the Kareem Hunt situation, somebody who's been through a horrible incident uh, that was their fault and their fault alone. We'll take a break. I know that was a heavy 25 minutes. When we come back, we will talk to Kings assistant coach Jason March uh, about the Kings, where they're at uh, through a quarter of the season, and where they're going on this road trip. It's The Drive, Sports 1140 KHTK.